bring home a puppy or a dog of your very own, then congratulations, you're taking a step towards having one of the most wonderful companions you could ever, ever imagine. In this video, I hope to give you some insight into a couple of things you might find useful to have for your new puppy or dog. Creatures, it's Em, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a bonus weasel. Bonus weasel! You have just seen a bonus weasel. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. My name's Em, I'm a former zookeeper and animal educator, and most of the time I spend my time making fun videos on YouTube to help you better take care of your pets. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the Creature Crew, and also hit that notification bell down in the corner there so you don't miss a single upload. And to start off, it's one of the most important things that you need to be thinking about for your dog. Just like us, animals can get sick, and when an animal is sick, it's up to us to be able to get them the healthcare that they need. And speaking of pet healthcare, today's video is sponsored by True Panion. True Panion offer pet insurance to help you to provide healthcare for your pet. And way last year, when I first brought home my now 11 and a half month old puppy, Kiva, I did a ton of research and I personally decided to choose True Panion for Kiva's healthcare. There is no worse feeling than having a sick pet and being too afraid to take them to the vet because you don't know if you can afford those vet's bills. True Panion are there to give me that extra peace of mind so that if the worst should ever happen to my puppy, I can easily take him into any vet clinic and just say, hey, give him the best of what you've got to save him because money is not an issue. But don't just take my word for it. I recently spoke to licensed practicing veterinarian Dr. Hunter Finn in Arlington, Texas for his professional opinion on pet insurance. Hi, my name is Dr. Finn and I'm a companion animal veterinarian in Arlington, Texas. I absolutely cannot stress enough the importance of investing into a quality pet insurance program for your fur babies. When it comes to providing the best health care for your pet, finances seem to dictate treatment plans more so than any other factor. There is nothing more frustrating to a veterinarian than diagnosing a very manageable condition and being unable to proceed simply due to cost. Obviously, no one plans or wishes for their pet to become ill or hurt, but let's be real, life can throw some serious curveballs when you're least expecting them. So please, if you are a pet owner or are considering adding a pet to your family, take some time to look into pet insurance plans and what they can provide for you and your loved ones. I asked you on Twitter to share your highest ever vet bills. Here's what you had to say. What is your highest vet bill? Share your experience in the comment section below. If you're interested in learning more about pet healthcare, then visit the link in my description box below where it says True Panion. Thank you so much to True Panion for sponsoring today's video and for doing so much to help protect our pets when the worst should happen. True Panion is available in North America, Canada, and Australia. Australia. Australia! I'm sorry, please don't hate me. <laughs> I'm trying my best, okay? And of course, a massive thank you to my good friend Dr. Hunter Finn for taking some time out of his very busy schedule to appear on the Emzotic channel and to give us his professional insight as a veterinarian into why pet insurance is so important. Do you keep any dogs at home? Leave me a comment right now in the comment box. Let me know what kind of dog or dogs you have or what kind of dog or dogs you're bringing home or what kind of dog or dogs you would love in your dream world to bring home. Mexican Cholo eats quintly because then I would use Kiba's blown coat and knit it a sweater and they'd be best friends. I have to make this happen. Well, I'm gonna break it down into a couple of things which you might need for your pet. Let's start with food. And sit. Is that your food? Is that your food in the mornings? Is that breakfast? Okay, diets. What you're going to be feeding your new puppy or what you're gonna be feeding your new dog. Now, I can do an entire video about doggy diets. There are so many different methods out there. I personally like to use raw food diets. Um, this is by We Feed Raw. They actually supply Kiba with a whole box every single month. Now, they have a couple of different options. With We Feed Raw, you can have the bone in option or the bone out. I personally like to keep the bone in. I think it gives Kiba something extra to chew on. It's got lots of nice calcium in there. This is antibiotic free, hormone free, and steroid free, no added preservatives. You're supposed to keep them frozen and they arrive in what used to be a polystyrene box but is now a cellulose 
biodegradable box. So very, very pleased with that step with Refeed Raw. If you want to find out a bit more about Refeed Raw, go down into my description box. You will find a link there and you can go and check it out for yourself. Now, of course, not everybody is going to go for a raw food diet and that's absolutely fine if you don't. I personally don't like to go just a kibble diet route or just a freeze dried route either. I personally very much like raw for keeps. Um, and apart from chicken, he also gets bison, quail, lamb, um, pork, there's a whole bunch of other meats as well, but he really likes the chicken and the turkey in particular. This is the chicken patty. Something like this would take maybe 10 minutes in warm water to thaw out, so it definitely saves me a lot of time. And speaking of food and drink, you're going to need somewhere to put your food. Now, there's a ton of different bowls out on the market. Many are very, very good, but there's also some with a couple of pitfalls. So what I like to use is a high-quality stainless steel. Um, if you're going to go for stainless steel, I would highly recommend going USA, UK, or Canada made. I personally wouldn't choose to go anywhere else, um, just because you're not always guaranteed a high-quality stainless steel. But I think a high-quality stainless steel, something USA made, is always a really, really good option. Um, with a lot of the pet store bowls you see a lot of them are plastic I do not like plastic I do not recommend plastic number one it's rubbish for the envi environment but number two it's also not great because it harbors a lot of bacteria very very quickly um, ceramics are pretty good as well the only issue with ceramic is that they actually if you don't keep on top of the cleaning with ceramic they harbor the worst kind of bacteria in the least amount of time um, so you, if you have say a ceramic bowl you don't clean it very often you don't clean it thoroughly you get a slime coating on it those proteins are really really bad for a dog to ingest and if that gets into the bloodstream hello person texting me then it's a really bad news for your dog so I personally like to go with stainless steel it has the slowest growing environment for bacteria so bacteria does not grow very fast in there and then it's very very easy to clean as well so stainless steel is what I would always recommend for your pets hello friend <laughs> Now, especially when you're bringing home a brand new puppy, something you're going to need a lot of are treats. Lots and lots of treats for lots of positive reinforcement. Now, you can also get tons of treats if you're going to be bringing home an older dog as well. It's a really great way to bond with a dog and to instill some basic training and some manners. Um, when it comes to treats, not going to lie, I'm pretty bad. Like, anything that's in my hand becomes a treat for Kiba. Isn't that right? This is not Kiba. This is Tinkerbell. Hello, Tinkerbell. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing that information with us. Now, these treats over here are some that actually Tinkerbell and Miko use. They are from I and Love and You. They are nice jerky bites. This is lamb venison. And I think that they're actually like air dried or freeze dried. And they're holistic, which is nice. Try and see what kind of treats your dogs like. Um, also, try and have a think about whether your dog um, prefers rewards which are food based or toy based. Some dogs love to play a game as praise. Um, like if you throw a ball, for example or throw a frisbee. Other dogs are very food motivated and very treat motivated, like Kiba. Kiba is very, very treat motivated. Let me see if I can find him. Keeps! Baby boy! What's this? There he is! He knows what that sound means. Are you guys all gonna have a treat? Okay, give me a sit. And a sit. Very, very nice. One for Kiba, one for Miko, and one for Tinkerbell. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <sighs> And a note about treats, or any food in general, always have a look on the back. Now, when it comes to treats and any food really, the fewer ingredients is actually better in my opinion. And the first ingredients, over here we can see venison, lamb, and dried chicory root. The first few ingredients are always the most prominent ingredients in any food or any treat. So you don't want to be seeing a ton of different things in there. You don't want to be seeing any kind of byproduct, any kind of cornmeal, nothing like that. That's all real cheap filler stuff. This is all good stuff. This is Iron Love and You. This is venison, lamb, dried chicory root, vegetable glycerin, salt, and salt near the back so you know that it's actually not very prominent and mixed I have no idea how to say that tocopherols 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 how it what is it it tocopherols are a natural preservative so top 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 florals mm -hmm. <laughs> to tofu rolls tofu rolls don't feed your dogs tofu So, you guys see this massive land cloud down here by my feet? This is Miko. And when Miko was a puppy, she came home in this. 
little carrier, which is exactly what I want to talk to you about next, because when you're going to be bringing home a new puppy or a new dog, um, depending on their size, you're going to need a carrier. Now, you're not going to need a carrier in every single situation. I mean, if you're bringing home an adult Great Dane, you're obviously not going to squish them like origami into a travel case. But if you are going to be bringing home a puppy, it's nice to have a good quality travel case, something that is nice and secure, something that's going to make them feel very nice and at home, something with a nice pad at the bottom, which is easy to, um, which is easy to remove and to wash, because sometimes accidents just happen. Isn't that right? I don't know why I'm looking at you. You don't have accidents. I'm sorry. Hello, am I exposing you on the internet? False exposure! False exposure. But this is by Sherpa. Now, Sherpa carriers are renowned in the USA for having really great um, quality, and also they come in certain sizes which are allowed in different cabins. Um, so, if you're going to be bringing your puppy from another state and flying with them in the cabin, do make sure that you look at the different size restrictions. Typically speaking, an airline is not going to be as strict with a squishy carrier as they would with the dimensions of a hard sided carrier. Um, and naturally, if you're bringing home a puppy, do make sure that you have all of your paperwork for the airlines and make sure you pay your fee and let them know in advance that you're going to be bringing a puppy. Also, you're going to want to have a veterinarian check them at least 10 days before the flight just to clear them and say that they are clear to travel. <laughs> you want to go in? <laughs> do you want to go up? Oh, you want to? <laughs> you want to go in? Okay, bye. Also, if you're going to be traveling with your puppies, you are going to need one of these. Now, these are actually three individual um, collapsible silicone and very easy to clean water bowls. I have this one. This is the literal one that Kiba came home with um, from his litter. He was the lime green boy in his litter. And then as he grew, we upgraded him to this orange one which is also collapsible. You can put water or kibble in that if you're bringing your dogs home on the airline. Try not to overdo it with lots of water because you don't want them peeing everywhere. And then he upgraded onto this one, which is even bigger. Um, and this is what I actually take out with us when we go on a hike. And that way I can just pour some water in and Kiba is good to go and he doesn't get dehydrated because obviously you want to keep your dogs hydrated when you're taking them out on a walk. So if you are going to be bringing a dog home on the airline, or rather on an airline in an aircraft, then do make sure that you have puppy pads, something for the bottom, some treats to keep them nice and calm, maybe even a jacket over the top to keep it nice and dark. Keep an eye on the temperature and also a water bowl so that if you get delayed or you have a stopover, you can give them a nice refreshing drink. Hello ladies. <laughs> okay, now we have just covered what you're bringing your dog home in. Now something that you can actually use to help them to settle in as well. These are crates. Now, some people love crate training. Some people really don't like crate training. I personally am a big fan of it, and I'm a big fan of this handsome honka monka. So, this is Kiba's impact crate. What is on your face? My God. My son, everybody. Hi. What's that on your nose? <laughs> You're too much. You're too much. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now, these are two impact crates. One of them is actually for Tinkerbell and Miko. Um, it's actually more Miko's. And then this one over here is Kiba's. You can tell because it is dark and handsome like he is with the lime green accents because we're aesthetic like that. And he was lime green boy in his litter. Um, now, from impact crates, these two are completely different. This one over here is actually collapsible. This one is a static, so you cannot collapse it. It is non-collapsible. If you open up this crate, it has a wipeable vinyl bottom to it, which needs a wipe down. Are you gonna go and investigate it, Tinkerbell? <laughs> Do you want to go and have a look at it? Now, not everybody is going to want to have such a big crate. Certainly, if you have a tiny, weeny little puppy, you do not need a large crate. This is a crate that I got in mind with Kiba's full adult size in mind. But when I did bring him home, I did implement, I think, about two or three different size collapsible crates, just really cheap ones from, I think it was either Petco or PetSmart. Um, and those were great for getting Kiba used to just staying in one place, being nice and calm, relaxing. Every time he went into his crate, it was his safe place 
faced, nobody bothered him, and that's how I feel he doesn't have any real separation anxiety now, because I super socialized him, but also when he goes in a crate, it's quiet time, and he's not scared of being in there, and if I have an emergency that I have to run out for like the whole day for, okay, maybe not the whole day, but if I have an emergency and I just don't want him loose in the house, or something's gone wrong in the house, and he might be in danger of licking something up, or tripping over something, like um, spilled glass, like broken glass, then I can just shut him in his crate, he's nice and settled, and I don't have to worry about him stepping on things or ingesting things that he shouldn't. So there are a lot of benefits, in my opinion, for crate training a dog, especially if you like to go on road trips. It's always safer to have your dog confined in a space. Um, obviously a nice ventilated space. Are you just gonna head on in there, Tink? You have something in your tail. It is a wisdom hair. It is not a wisdom hair, it is hay. So yes, if you get your puppies used to crates early on, it's not a stressful situation for them. If you guys would like a video, a dedicated video, on how to get your dogs used to a crate and crate training along with different crate games you can teach um, and play with your dog, let me know down in the comment box below. Next up, how to harness train your chickens. Just kidding. So I'm going to try and talk to you guys about harnesses and collars and leashes, but we've got two supermodels who have to be witnessed first. It's okay, you can just step all over my props. It's all good. Thanks, ladies, for blessing us with your presence. Kiba, thank you also for that wonderful view. Traitor. And now we come on to something which I am very passionate about, and that is all the bougie accessories. Or should I say, the bougie poochie accessories. <laughs> okay, someone please laugh. Someone please drop me an LOL down in the comment box. Um, okay, so, collars, leashes, harnesses, all the good stuff. This is what you're going to need in order to start taking your dog outside. Now there are, as you can see, a ton of different styles out there. These are just some of Kiba's extremely extensive collection. He is a rather spoiled pup, and to be completely honest with you, he needs like two of these items. <laughs> um, the rest is all super mega extra. Now when he first came home, this was the harness that I had sent to me by Headlight Harness. Um, this was how tiny he was when he was a tiny little bear cub. Let's just insert a throwback to Kiba as a puppy. Ah, isn't that cute? And now he's almost one, and I'm not thriving on that knowledge. Anyway, this was his very, very first harness that I gave him, but actually, he came from his breeder with a collar and leash, which is over here, because, as we know, he was the lime green boy in his litter. So this was his first ever collar. It's adjustable. It's a standard nylon adjustable collar. Um, and then this was his leash as well over here. Now, he very quickly outgrew this very quickly because Eurasias grow like weeds. They really do, Tinkerbell, I'm telling you. Um, so he graduated onto this in about a week after I brought him home. It's padded and it's by Headlight Harness. The reason it's from Headlight Harness, or why it's called Headlight Harness, is because, boom, I have now blinded you with his Iron Man chest. Um, this is a light-up harness with super, super reflective straps. This is nylon on the side here. And I wanted this for Kiba because he is a very dark boy and at nighttime he can get easily lost. So this is a nice way to be able to light up the pavement in front of him, be able to make sure that he is not ingesting anything he shouldn't in the dark. And of course, most importantly, so that motorists can actually see him. God forbid he ever gets loose and runs off, at least he would still have his reflective straps on. They could save his life. So when you bring home your puppy or your dog, Hello, Kiba. Thank you for joining us and obstructing the view with your lovely derriere. Um, you want to make sure that you have a professional to help you to fit the harness. You don't want your dog to be able to slip the harness. Now, no harness is 100% slip proof, but if you fit them incorrectly, you're going to have a greater chance of losing your puppy or your dog in a dangerous situation. Um, is this nostalgic for you, puppy? Is this nostalgic for you? Thank you. Oh, and we're going to sit right in. Yeah, there we go. Right in my lap because he's still a mama's boy. He's not a traitor after all. You're not a traitor. Hi, hello. This is this is a lot of fluff happening right now. Hi, oh, can, I, can I get on with my video, everyone? Can you get out of my lap, Kiba? I'm squished. Ha! Now you guys can't step on it. I have outfoxed you. Yes, I 
have. Okay, so this here is Kiba's everyday collar, and by everyday collar, I mean he wears it every day because I take him out to the park with this collar. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Is this the best kind of collar for Kiba? Absolutely not. You see all this thick strap here? This means that around his neck, he's a double-coated breed. It actually gives him a lot of matting, so you have to go in there and really, really brush that out. Um, but if you're gonna actually have a collar on the entire time, this is not on Kiba all the time, this is just for walks, then I would suggest having for a long or double-coated breed of dog a rolled leather collar. That is not going to completely take away all of the matting, but it's gonna help substantially. However, the reason why I wanted to use this collar is it's because it's very, very special. This is the Phi Dog Collar, and the Phi Dog Collar, if I can actually get my camera to focus, what, why are you throwing a wobbly? I don't understand why my camera is, it's just throwing a wobbly. All right, so, now that I have my Phi Dog Collar in focus, the way that it works is via Bluetooth and via a subscription. So you actually purchase the collar, you purchase the subscription, and then you are able to track your dog anywhere in the United States, anywhere where there is cellular service. So this is Phi Dog Collar. Um, it is not sponsored, I bought this myself. And on the collar, I also have very important Kiba's name tag, and on the back, is my telephone number, which I'm not gonna share with you guys for obvious reasons. And he also has his Trupanion tag as well for his pet insurance, just in case I am out and someone has to rush him to the vet, or if he gets lost and he has to go to the vet, then they know his policy number on the back, which I'm also not gonna show you, but any vet will recognize this logo. Vets would recognize this symbol over here as Trupanion and know that he is covered with insurance. So this is what I use to take Keep out every day. I put this on around his neck and I'm able to slip two fingers underneath. Um, with a lot of collars for many different kinds of dogs, you want to be extra careful with the kind of collar that you're using because breeds like Kiba, who is Eurasia, or even the Samoids, which are hanging around the corner somewhere. Hello, who's that? Hi. Um, they can actually slip collars really, really easily because they've got really thick necks. Not like a Doberman or a Greyhound where they're not going to slip a collar quite as easily. Um, so you want to be very careful. Make sure that you consult someone. <laughs> Hi, girls. Um, if you're not sure about the kind of collar or leash to use. Now, speaking of leashes, there are a ton of different kinds of leashes. This is my favorite kind of leash over here. It is just a pretty basic standard um, nylon leash, but this is also headlight harness, so it is mega super reflective, and it actually has a double loop. So at the top here, this is where you hold on. This is where you clip onto either your collar or your harness. I just prefer to clip Kiba onto a harness because it's a lot more secure for him. Um, and then this is a loop at the the bottom which you can use if you need to pull them back from something very very quickly or pull them into a heel position without having to like lift your hand all the way up here trying to get them into a heel position with this so I like the double loop um, now if you notice uh, wear and tear on your leash if you have um, something maybe more like an inch or so or even a half inch of a tear um, I don't have one anymore I used to have one which was a good example do not use any more because they can quite easily tear so you want to keep an eye for any wear and tear especially if you have a puppy with little needles little sharp um, shark teeth puppies like to chew so if you find them chewing on the leash and then there's a little tear or a nick in it chuck it get another one trust me on that this is one of Kiba's more bougie leech, uh, leeches, leashes. This is by the Foggy Dog, um, who I found on Instagram. Again, this is not sponsored. This is something I purchased. And um, this is just like a hammered gold effect hardware on this like rope style um, leash. But the reason I'm coming onto this is because of what I have attached here. This is something else you're gonna need. Not necessarily the bag, unless you wanna be really extra, but you want to have the bags within the bag. Let me see if I can open this. Fail. <laughs> Fail. Ta-da! I did it. So on the inside we have biodegradable poop bags. Now if you're going to be walking your puppy or your dog outside, make sure first of all you have all your vaccinations, it's nice and safe, and it's in a safe area. Um, Please don't be that person who leaves the poop behind. Just pick it up. It doesn't take much effort. Please do yourself and your neighborhood a favor. Buy some of these biodegradable bags, pick up the poop, tie a knot in it, throw it away. If you don't want to be hanging out in, like if you don't want to have those just hanging around in your pocket, then you can get a nice little cover like this. So yes, this is actually a poop bag bag. It's where you hide your poop bags. Yes. And it has this little um, like keychain thing on it so you can put it Anywhere you have a leash, most of them have a little D-ring at the top, so you're able to do that. Um, and then there is this, which is extremely extra, which I hardly ever use. It's actually more for um, 
like photo shoot purposes. It was actually for a music video, but Kate loves this one. This is Kate's favorite leash in the whole world. She really likes this leash a lot. She thinks it's really pretty. Awful. It's not. You just you, you just don't understand what's good. It's beautiful, Kate. It's beautiful. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Actually, another kind of leash that I like is a super mega extra long 60 foot leash because it's really good for being able to uh, do introductions to recall with your puppy. It means that in parks where you're allowed, depending on leash laws, you should be able to let your dog have a bit more freedom, but also work on some uh, recall as well. Come! Good boy! And of course, with all of your dog or puppy gear, you might want somewhere to store. Now, this isn't exactly an essential, not gonna lie, but I just thought I would flex and show you how cute Kiba's accessories are. Yes, he has accessories and bow ties. And bow ties for the 4th of July. And a crown. Because you should see him in a crown. <laughs> So the next thing I want to come on to is comfortable beds and things which your dog can sleep on. Now, all of these beds that you see here, this bed, well, the gray insert, this throw over here, a protective machine washable throw, this memory foam bed, that memory foam bed at the back there, and this one's also memory foam, as is this big one over here, which Kiba is currently delightfully enjoying a marrow bone on. Hi Kibs, all of these have come from Paw.com. Now, <laughs> this is not a sponsored video with Paw.com. This is just an accumulation of two women that happen to have a lot of Paw.com products who moved in together. And this has now become a big, like, show house for their products. Um, unofficial, not sponsored, by the way. Um, but yes, beds are certainly something that you want to consider for your new dog or new pet. Now, I am personally not a big fan of plastic side beds. I know a lot of people think that plastic beds are very hygienic, but ultimately, like, you're, you're sleeping on plastic. And even if you have an insert, a lot of dogs actually end up chewing the plastic beds that you see um, typically in a lot of pet stores. So I personally prefer something that is machine washable. All of these do have um, covers which can be unzipped and thrown in the machine washer. Um, hi Keeps. <laughs> what are you doing ladies? I can hardly see you, you're so well camouflaged. You're so adorable. Now, with a lot of dogs in their older age, they do need to have some kind of an orthopedic bed because of their joints, but I wanted to get a head start on a lot of things with Kiba because I didn't want him to have any strain on his bones whatsoever. He is a very fast growing breed. They just like explode in size overnight. Um, so I wanted to make sure that he was sleeping on something super, super comfortable, which is why I chose to have these memory foam beds. You two are just too adorable. Aren't you? You're so aesthetic. Aesthetic is the word of the day, along with traitor. Now, you don't have to go completely nuts and buy up like a whole online store worth of orthopedic, very luxury dog beds. That's that's just what we did because we're extra. But um, you can utilize any kind of, you know, old cushions, mattresses, um, like kid size mattresses if you've got like a really, really big dog. Towels do really well for puppies because puppies do mess, unfortunately. Um, at least many puppies do. Kiba didn't, didn't because he is a perfect boy and a perfect void as well. Um, but a lot of puppies will mess things up, so if you have something that is wipeable, machine washable, that's a really, really good way to go. Okay, next up we have toys, and I am in the closet right now where I have like a whole stack of reptile stuff, and then dog stuff, and then usually ferret stuff, but I pulled it all out because it's a mess in here, and I'm still sorting everything. So, let's have a look at toys next. Now depending on the size of your dog or puppy, you're going to want to get the appropriate sized items. So over here, 
um, Kong have very, very kindly supplied Kiba with all of his puppy and adult dog treats and toys that he's going to need for a long time. Um, so as a puppy, he used these. Um, he's already gone through a couple of them, but um, this, as you can see, is made for puppies because it says puppy on it. Um, but you also just want to take in mind the size of your dog because not all puppies are exactly the same size. Then you graduate up onto, say, a regular size Kong. Um, this is Kiba regular Kong that I leave him with if I go out for a while, which I can actually stuff full of most different kinds of treats that he likes. And the great thing that people don't really know about Kong toys is that they're actually freezable. You can stuff them with things and freeze them, which kind of makes the fun last even longer. Um, so Kong toys are certainly one of the top toys that I recommend. They're safe and they also have a fantastic range for dogs who are extreme chewers. So let's have a look at this Kong back here which feels really, really tough. I mean, it's, it, this is for your power chewers, like Rottweilers, different kinds of pits. Um, German Shepherd dogs can also be power chewers. Labs can also be power chewers. Any size dog can be a power chewer, but typically the larger the dog, the more sort of um, strong the bite force is. So a lot of toys get destroyed very quickly, become a waste of money. These are safe. Um, these are safe for extreme chewers. So definitely do take a look at the Kong range. Um, and they also have things like Frizz, Bees, and these are little dental sticks. Let me just see if I can get one out to show you. And um, these actually fit really well inside many different kinds of Kong toys, um, as well as having these delicious doggy friendly pastes. This one over here is sweet potato spread, but Kiba really likes there. I think they have like a bacon and cheese one. That's Kiba's favorite. Um, he's not the biggest fan of the sweet potato one, but it'll do the trick every now and then. I just don't tend to leave him with it as often because he loses interest, but the bacony and cheesy ones he really, really likes. Um, Kong also have a really fantastic range of soft toys, which have different textures, make different sounds, and they're very, very engaging for dogs. Um, this one has a squeaker in it, and it also has, um, I think it has squeakers somewhere else in the feet. Nope, not in the feet, not in this one. It has a rope at the front here, and something with a lot of dogs when they're teething is they like to have different kinds of surfaces at different points in their teething. So for some puppies, they might want to start off on the softer parts, um, and then they want to graduate on to something like this, which is rope and really nice and tough and is going to help them to alleviate any kind of gum pain that they might have. Um, something else that you can do is give them frozen treats for that. That's also really great to be able to help them to alleviate any any kind of gum pains. So for example, um, there's this Puppy Kong Binky over here, um, which is great for puppies because they've got this little loop here. This is much softer than the Extreme Chew Kong rubber, and it's also softer and more pliable than the regular Red Kong toys. Um, so this is going to be nice for puppies to really get a good chew in there. They can wrap their mouth over this and really uh, bite into it and um, ease the pain in their gums. Um, so you can insert different treats to extend playtime as well. There's a little hole down there. You can also freeze this as well, all the different rubbery Kong toys can be frozen um, so that's really really good to know toys are something you don't have to spend a ton of money on just be mindful that the toys you're actually getting for your dogs are good for your dogs or for your puppies because some toys are very very cheap and come with materials that are not really safe for dogs so if you see something with bits falling off just chuck it away you don't want them ingesting anything getting any kind of impaction um try and stick to the bigger brands if you can um kong certainly is one that i trust very much they have not sponsored this video these are just my own personal thoughts my own personal collection of kong toys so um yes that's what i would recommend for dogs go and get yourself a nice healthy selection of kong toys yep my puppy is spoiled and I'm okay with this. <laughs> You might not need all of these, but these are pretty essential for me because I have a double-coated breed. So if you have a double-coated breed of dog, I would say get yourself a good greyhound comb. Um, this one is actually by Chris Christensen, I think. Chris Christensen, it's a very, very good make. Same with these as well. This is what the logo looks like. Of course, my puppy chewed it. Of course, my puppy did chew it as a pupper. So this is Chris Christensen and um, this is a finishing brush I believe. This is at the very end for finishing off the coat making it look nice but to start at the very beginning this is what you're going to want to get right down in there using the thick um, wide spaced um, teeth. Get right down in there 
brush, 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 all the way down to the skin, little by little. And then eventually you can go in with a um, undercoat brush if you like. This is really good for picking up all kinds of clumps of hair. And then you go in with the finishing brush, like this one, which is very, very soft. This one is a little bit soft as well, but it's kind of pokey. This one's super soft. This one's very pokey. So be very careful. And finally, we come on to one of the last things which you are going to need for your puppy. Patience. Lots and lots of patience. Not only patience while you build that bond and understanding with your new puppy or dog, but also patience with yourself. It's very difficult to completely understand right off the bat exactly how this new puppy is going to fit into your life. They've all got their own personalities, especially puppies, they change their personality multiple times as they grow. So. Just take a deep breath if you are struggling. Do not feel like it's a shameful thing to reach out for help if you've gone for a specific breed. A great place for yourself to go to find some more information are breed-specific fancier groups or uh, breed-specific rescue groups as well, where they'll be able to help you to better understand your particular breed and if you're having any kind of behavioral issues, how you can best address those for your particular breed of dog. And really, don't be afraid to reach out to a trainer. Trainers are absolutely wonderful. They are rooting for you. They want you to have have a really wonderful time bringing home your new pet into your life so don't be afraid to reach out and ask people for some help. I would show you Kiba but he's gone to bed because it is now 10 30 p.m and he's a traitor. <laughs> I'm just joking I've used that word a lot today he is not he is my most loyal companion I love him very very much but today he was just kind of head in the clouds and I don't ever force my animals to like perform for the camera if they don't want to so He's just off sleeping, doing his thing, probably like lying upside down, like draw me like one of your French girls. And who am I to interrupt that for him? <laughs> What do you guys think about the list and the different things that I've recommended for new puppy and dog owners? Have I left anything out? If I have, feel free to leave a comment down below with anything you think I might have missed out. And also your top tips for bringing home a new dog or a new puppy. And things which you think are useful. Which you've found useful which you want to share with people, because sharing is caring. <laughs> and once again, a huge thank you to True Panion for sponsoring today's video and providing such an incredibly valuable service to help all of the pet owners out there who really want to help protect their pets and to help to look after their health. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye.